Welcome to Youth Group, friends. I hope you're doing all right being quarantined inside, but it's okay. You should get outside. It's a lot of fun. So, with that being said, here's a little message from your leaders. It's been 20 seconds and still no cars. This was kind of disappointing. All right, let's go. Hey guys, how we do? I'm here for you and I hope things are going well. Enjoy this time with your family right now. We'll see you soon. So I just got back inside for my walk. But just so you know, to understand really how people are really doing in this time, I just wanna show you this little video clip of the Rhines family. It's great. So friends, yeah, um, just want to give you a quick message here. Uh, as we continue to walk through this uh, kind of weird time, I do want to remind you, we are in the season of Lent, and that is the time, uh, 40 days-ish, sometimes it's, it's like technically 46 or something like that. Uh, but the time of Lent is important for us Christians because it's the time from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday that we celebrate well, or remember the the life death and resurrection of jesus christ and so i just want to give you guys a quick message about that because i think in these next three weeks uh it's important for us to still focus on that you know i don't know if we're going to be able to have easter service i don't know if we're going to be able to to meet together on easter but i still think it's super important for us to come together in this time and and talk about the true life of jesus because without the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, there is no Christian, there is no Christ follower, there is no uh, erasing of sins. So I want to read a, a passage from Matthew chapter 26, and this is a very, very powerful, powerful chapter. It is the basically how everything comes together. So I'm going to read the whole thing. It says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he said to his disciples, as you know, Passover begins in two days and the son of man will be handed over to be crucified. At the same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting to capture Jesus and secretly kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or people may riot. And it goes on and says, Meanwhile, Jesus was at Bethany, a home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indigent and saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a price and the money could have been given to a poor. But Jesus was aware of this and replied, Why this woman, why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth. Whenever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered. So this is crazy. The first, uh, what is it? 13 verses of Matthew 26. A, a woman comes in and pours this like perfume on Jesus. Like it's weird. Like what? Actually, what she was doing, it's insane, was anointing Jesus and preparing Jesus's body for death. Like, how morbid is that? Like, she knows and he knows what's going on. But the disciples are like, she's whack. Like, what is she up to? Like, why would she do that? Everything that we're about to read here is, is kind of preparing 
Jesus for death. And so we go forward and uh, the Last Supper takes place. And it says, uh, Jesus says, take this and eat it for it is my body. And he took a cup of wine and he had the bread and said, take it and eat it because this is my body. And he said, take the cup and give thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And that's uh, verses 26 through uh, 28 right there in Matthew chapter 26. And so in that time, Jesus, a little bit after the, the whole uh, perfume thing, Jesus is sitting with his disciples and he, he grabs a piece of bread. And, and this probably sounds familiar to many of you, uh, communion, uh, the, the bread and the wine or the bread and the cup is what we call it. And Jesus says, this is my body. This is a representation of my body that is about to be killed on the cross, about to be tortured to death. And then he takes the cup and says, this, this is my blood that I'm about to shed for you. Drink these, eat these in remembrance of me. It's powerful. And so we go on. Uh, Jesus is eventually betrayed by Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, and he's arrested uh, by the Roman guards. And then this is this is where I want to kind of leave it for a second. This is verse 69 through verse 75. Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, denies Jesus. And Jesus actually predicted this a little while ago, if you read the, the chapter. But Jesus knew this was going to happen, which is just, again... This whole thing, Jesus knew what was about to take place. Imagine knowing that you're about to go die on a cross and knowing everything that was going to take place. And and you had the choice of whether or not to follow it. But Jesus, for him, there was no choice. It was the fate of the whole world in his hands. And he knew what needed to be done. So I want to focus on Peter real quick. It says, meanwhile... Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, you're one of those Galilean, with, uh, or excuse me, you were with Jesus the Galilean, but Peter denied it in front of him. I don't know what you're talking about. Later out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied him. And then it says a little later, other bystanders came over to him and said, you were one of them that were with Jesus. You, I can tell by your accent and Peter swore. A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And then suddenly a rooster crowed, which Jesus said would happen. So I don't want to go too much longer. I just want you to take this for now. This is pre-Jesus' death. And in the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about Christ's path to the cross. Uh, actually, next week, we're going to go a little bit back before this and then talk about the death and resurrection. I'll put out a, a video on Good Friday uh, talking about the death of Jesus. So we'll kind of start here, go back, go forward again. And I want to leave with Peter. Peter struggled greatly after knowing that Jesus was arrested. He didn't want to get the same fate as Jesus because if he said, I, I was with him, they probably would have grabbed him, thrown him right next up to Jesus on the cross. And honestly, who knows? That could have happened. But but Jesus knew that wasn't going to happen. Jesus knew that Peter, his one of his closest disciples, would deny him not once, not twice, but three times. And I think many times we do that ourselves. And right now, I mean, we're in a, a really odd time. I mean, it can seem like the world is completely different. I mean, a week or two ago, this this we weren't going to be talking about this, you know. Uh, but here we are. And so I think right now you have plenty of time to just kind of think about your relationship with God. Where is it at? I know a lot of you guys on Winter Retreat, we talked about that. Uh, where are you with God? It's okay if you're here and, and someone else is here. That's all right. We can encourage each other. That's what the body of Christ is supposed to do. So this week, I want you guys to, to think about how I maybe denied Jesus in my life. 
How can I move forward in my faith with God? How can I continue to pursue Christ right now? Even though I may be isolated, even though life may be different, the pursuit of Christ never ends. And God's pursuit of you never ends. So that's just a quick message. We're going to go on to announcements right now. What is up, friends? So to show that you should be outside and exercising and being active, we're going to do some exercise here in this video. So I'm going to parkour myself. Parkour! Onto this parking block thingy and walk all the way down them while balancing and throwing this rock between my hands. That's pretty neat. Pretty talented, wouldn't you say? Also, Journey Got Talent is starting this week, so be on the lookout for that. But as far as youth group, three big things. We have a high school group chat in that. We're supporting each other, loving each other, sending some crazy videos, all those things. So if you're not in that, let me know. Number two, there is the end of March Serial Madness. <laughs> where we are trying to figure out what the best cereal is in the whole globe right now. So, Frosted Flakes versus Lucky Charms, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch versus Fruity Pebbles. We'll see who's gonna win. Obviously, it's gonna be Frosted Flakes. Right. Finally, last thing, TikTok Challenge is coming up this week. And basically, whoever can make the most creative video about this whole pandemic, We'll get a gift card of their choice after this whole thing's over. Now, I don't want anything obscene, don't want anything making fun of people or people with the virus, but making fun of maybe how you're inside, how you're not doing schoolwork, things like that. All the whole list of ideas about that. Now, high school youth group, these are kind of the videos you'll be looking at right here. This is what we're gonna be doing for the foreseeable future. Probably me making stupid videos and my Crocs. But as for now, love God, love people, wash your hands.